Rebecca, Prince Charles was leading the royal condemnation of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. He was, although I should point out that actually first out of the traps, so to speak, were the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, who posted at the weekend on social media a picture of them meeting the Ukrainian president and his wife on behalf of the Queen when they came to the country two years ago and expressing their solidarity. But I do know that the Prince of Wales spent the weekend locked in talks with his advisers about how to express the anguish he, like everybody, feels at, at what he is seeing uh, unfold in Ukraine, but also what he could help to do practically. And he um, he started off by giving a, uh, a speech at the beginning of the week in which he referenced his uh, his his deep concern at the level of Russian aggression in Ukraine. And uh, he's moved on from there gradually this week. And I see he and the Duchess of Cornwall made a point of visiting a Ukrainian church. They did, and I was with them yesterday when they visited the Ukrainian cathedral in central London. Um, I have to say it was an incredibly emotional visit all round. Um, many of the people they met there, of course, have, have loved ones, have family and friends back in Ukraine, as well as being involved in trying to organise relief efforts here. And um, the Duchess of Cornwall, I mean, you know, she was in tears through most of the visit because of, of hearing the, uh, the stories of these people uh, and their, their fears for their family and friends. Um, but this visit, of course, as I, as I alluded to before, was, was it, it saw Prince Charles um, reinforce uh, in a very off the cuff, but again, very pointed speech. He, he referred to the, he, the fortitude and the, uh, the strength of the Ukrainian people in the face of what he called was truly appalling Russian aggression. But he also wanted to be practical about this. And this is where the royal family can be much criticised in many ways, but they do have this remarkable convening power. So he brought with him representatives from five charities that he's patron of, everything from things like um, World Jewish Relief to the British Red Cross, to help the people at the cathedral who are largely coordinating the efforts of the uh, the large Ukrainian community we have in the UK uh, to see how they could better help them. And apparently the Duchess has also made a donation to the Mail's refugee campaign. So the publishers of the Daily Mail and the Mail on Sunday, like everybody across the country, have been uh, shocked and appalled by what we have seen emerge in Ukraine in recent days. So at the weekend, we launched our own Ukrainian refugee appeal. Um, it's actually become the, uh, the biggest and the fastest fundraiser in uh, British newspaper history. Uh, I think we've broken through the two and a half million pound barrier already in a matter of days. And one of those who have made a very substantial contribution to it is the Duchess of Cornwall. And when I spoke to her spokesperson, they just said simply she, like everyone, has been uh, shocked and uh, very distressed at the appalling scenes that we've been seeing unfolding both on television and in the pages of the newspapers and felt that she wanted to do anything she could to help. Now, Charles has spoken out against Russia before, hasn't he? <laughs> he has, and the reason why I laugh, not, not because it's funny, but it was uh, an exclusive I wrote for the Daily Mail back in 2014 that I got absolutely lambasted for at the time. Uh, it was, I think, the lead item on the 10 o'clock news. It was, uh, I got, my, my reputation got hauled over the coals and things like question times for reporting what was described to be a private conversation. In fact, it wasn't. Uh, Prince Charles, I was covering uh, his and Camilla's trip to Canada and he went to a, a centre uh, which was uh, set up for people who'd fled Nazi aggression during the Second World War and had emigrated to Canada. And one of the ladies he spoke to there was talking about her experiences at the time. And he said in a very off the cuff remark, but a very, very from the heart remark that uh, Putin was doing just about the same as Hitler uh, in the Ukraine. Now, bearing in mind, this was 2014, eight years ago. Um, although no one disagreed with the Prince of Wales, he, he was uh, cautioned by many for speaking about an issue that was considered rather political and maybe straying from an area, he, he should saying into an area he shouldn't be in. But actually, his words uh, seem very, very prescient today, don't they? And the Cambridges and Sussexes were also sending their personal support to the Ukrainian president. 
Yes, they have. As I said, William and Kate were, were very quick to post a message on social media. And I think they felt that because they had actually met uh, the president and his wife only two years previously. And they'd clearly been very impressed by him, both as a, a person, as a politician and as a, as a, a, as a nation's leader. Um, and also the um, Duke and Duchess of Sussex have posted a message on their Archwell website. Now, that was slightly less well received by some. Uh, and I understand some of the criticism there with people saying, well, you know, why does it matter what they think? But, you know, I think you've got to look at this on a human level. And, and as I say, people just feel they want to do and say something because they cannot believe uh, what they're seeing unfolding uh, you know, unfolding in front of their eyes in, in you know, in, in 21st century Europe. Are the royals taking government or foreign office advice, do you think, before making these sorts of comments? It's a really good question, actually, I have to say, and, and one that's maybe slightly tricky to answer. But I think the best way to say it is this, is that all senior royals have people within their household who are often ex-government advisors, but people who liaise with the government. So I don't think they're taking government advice per se, but they have people on the payroll who know what kind of areas they should or shouldn't stray into. And actually, I asked this question of the um, Russia, uh, sorry, the um, Ukrainian ambassador at the Ukrainian uh, cathedral yesterday and said that Prince Charles has sometimes been criticised, you know, for straying into what some see as a political issue. And his reaction was very instantaneous and very heartfelt. And he said, how can this be considered a political issue? You know, this is a humanitarian issue. Um, and he said he was fully grateful and fully supportive of everything the royal family said. And he made sure that he would take those comments back to the Ukrainian government so they knew the level of support they were getting from the UK. He, he, he was very, very moved by it, I have to say. Thank you, Rebecca. We'll hear back from her in a few minutes. And if you would like to donate to the Mail's campaign to help Ukrainian refugees, head to the website mymail.co.uk forward slash Ukraine. That link is on screen now. Thank you very much. But sticking with the royals giving their support to the Ukrainians, we're often told that royals and politics don't mix. So we asked royal biographer Hugo Vickers to give us his views on their comments. We are seeing the same values under attack today in Ukraine in the most unconscionable way. In the stand we take here, we are in solidarity with all those who are resisting brutal aggression. I know that um, people will always say that the royal family shouldn't get involved with politics, but to my mind, this is more of a humanitarian issue. Uh, one country is being invaded by another. A lot of people are going to suffer. A lot of people will lose their lives. A lot of cities will be destroyed. And I think the way I look at it at any rate is that it's more expressing sympathy for the people of Ukraine as they go through this uh, terrible ordeal. Again, I understand that, that point of view and of course, it, it's not the first time that he's done this because in regard to China and Tibet, he refused some years ago to go to the Chinese president's state banquet. And I thought that that was a mistake because it could be that he becomes king and the British government wants him to go to China. He may not want to go to China or the Chinese might not want to have him there. But on this particular occasion, I think it's slightly different because I think that, you know, there is a sort of global reaction to what's been going on. And uh, I think it's more sympathy on a humanitarian level with the people of Ukraine. And I think that, uh, I hope I'm not contradicting myself, but I do think that's acceptable. As, as we know, um, William and Catherine have met President Zelensky. And so, you know, you could argue that it would be rather strange if they didn't um, somehow express their support and more than support in a way, I think more sympathy than support almost. Um, they do have to be careful not to get involved directly with politics and certainly not with things like party politics. But um, I think on this occasion, I rather support their wish to show the sympathy. Well, the queen has always uh, remained above politics and she has always remained silent. So I would imagine on this occasion, um, she will um, continue that policy. Uh, the queen, is uh, not a stirrer up of trouble in any way. She is a tremendous conciliator. That's been really the leitmotiv of her whole reign. And so I think, well, if Prince Charles and Prince William 
have had their say. I don't think there's any need for her to say anything. But by the way, it's very good to see her back at work again and doing Zooms, uh, receiving ambassadors, and to know that, you know, she's on the mend from her recent bout of, of COVID. That was Hugo Vickers. Let us bring in our panel now. My troublesome siblings, historian and writer Dr Tessa Dunlop and The Daily Mail's diary editor Richard Eden, welcome to you both. Tessa, I'm going to start with you. Now, rolling out the British royal red carpet has historically been used to sort of flatter and soften the world's despots. Does this risk sort of like lessening that power if, if royals tend to be politically motivated? Uh, no, I think Hugo put it quite well there. Our political class is united. You know, we are in support of the Ukraine, not just giving them charitable aid, but actually helping them push back against military aggression. So it would be odd, I think, in many respects, if the royal family didn't fall in behind really a united political front, like they did, obviously, in the Second World War. I mean, George uh, VI became, after Churchill, the most symbolic individual it's, in the country. It's rather worrying me that that's the comparison the second world war i mean this is why this is what is so fearsome about the whole situation isn't it yeah we're on the precipice of something we are in mm. the middle of something terrifying mm. and i think that's where and, and hugo nailed it we're walking on this very fine line certainly the royal family and in particular the queen wouldn't want to prod the bear but at the same time to not stand in support of individuals. Zelensky, I mean, they've met. I mean, Kate Middleton, like me as a middle, a middle-aged woman, I expect she also had the hots for him. I mean, you know, the whole world, surely is, you know, the whole world, obviously, but, but the Western world certainly, you know, is very impressed by a president. They've, they've got a personal connection to him. It would have been very odd indeed, I think, if they hadn't reached out and said mm. something. I want to ask you this, Richard, unlike Her Majesty, when Charles is king, we will have a pretty good idea of a lot of his opinions. Don't you, do you think? I mean, that, that's quite that, and presumably that's going to be some of his negative opinions. Um, we certainly will. I mean, I find it very hard to imagine the Queen using the sort of language that we've heard from Prince Charles this week, um, because it, it just never has been her style. I genuinely can't think of any time that she's spoken out in that way. Whereas Charles has almost sort of made a name for himself, if that's the right phrase, with his outspoken language. Um, you know, he's being critical of various things, whether it's architecture or farming yeah. or the climate change, and he has spoken out very vividly. Um, and, but I think he's always been aware of that because he's had such a long time, a whole lifetime as, you know, in waiting. But I think this is different because there really is almost no individual in Britain who wouldn't agree that Ukraine's under unconscionable attack and that it is brutal Russian aggression. I mean, these are words, we're looking at the, the scenes unfold on the television screen and he's articulating really, I think, the, the national conscience at this moment. Yeah, and I'm sure the Queen agrees with everything he's said, but it's just that she wouldn't normally be the person they would use to express um, these words in that way. What do you think about the younger generation of royals? Because I'm thinking of particularly the Sussexes and the Cambridges have, have been born into a world where it's almost the, a terrible thing in, in younger people's eyes not to say anything when there's a big world event. Do you think that they would have felt the pressure to have a voice? Well, but again, I think this was quite a simple one for them because, uh, yes, they do speak out. Yes, most especially Meghan Markle had her own, you know, social media accounts, etc. before she became a princess. Uh, but uh, we're united. This has pretty much united the Western world in an unprecedented way. Think how, you know, uh, we've all been falling out with each other, with Europe, with America, and now we're all together. So in a way, I think the problem was solved for the Sussexes and Cambridges. You can say something here because everyone agrees with you. They're not so much leading as following, really, I feel. Mm. Now, you noticed, Richard, a strange social media trend when it came to the Sussexes and Zelensky. What, what was that? Well, this was something extraordinary that, you know, here we have President Zelensky, who is fighting to survive, well, he's in a bunker, you know, his yeah. life is under threat. And he um, was able to send a message to the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, thanking them for their message of support for Ukraine. This, this is unbelievable, but this is literally what happened. He starts then being abused by some of the more strident um, social media followers of, of Harry and Meghan, saying, why haven't you thanked them? Oh, my God. And you just think, my goodness. But I mean, at which point do we have to question to what extent are those trolls and naysayers actually bots? 
<laughs> controlled, incidentally, possibly by Russia. I've often wondered the sort of militancy behind some of the Sussex following makes me wonder if they're actually real. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. It just comes across as irrational and... And it, it does make you worry and, about... you know, not now, Sussex squad. Not now. Yeah. Read the room. That's all we have time for on our YouTube version of the show. For more Royal News views and videos, head to www.mailplus.co.uk forward slash royals. That link is on your screen now. I'll see you there.